In this video, I'm going to talk about the origin of time. Most physicists don't discuss it because they don't know. Not really. They may think they know, but they don't. And it's a problem that gets so bad that there's a lot of mysticism and nonsense in public about it, even coming from physicists. And they'll even, I've even heard it claim that time only comes from humans because humans see time and well that's nonsense. Time and distance are the two most fundamental things in the universe. And we can see that because all particles have an experience of wavelengths. In physics they say there's particle wave duality, where every particle has a wave associated with it, and every wave a particle, and the two are never separate. Although, as I pointed out in a previous video, that's another one of the greatest lies in physics, because the wave has a medium, and the medium is the quantum field, the quantum fluctuations of the quantum field. So the wave is propagation of energy and waves and fields through space, through the quantum field. So the wave isn't the particle, but the waves associated with the particle. But nonetheless, all particles have waves, and all quantum fluctuations are wave-like properties as well. And any time you have a wave, you have wavelengths, obviously, but you also have frequencies. And while wavelengths are in units of distance, frequencies are in units of cycles per unit time, and we use seconds. So the most fundamental time unit we see is actually frequencies cycles per second, as we define it. You could use a different length of time per second if you wanted. It doesn't, that's arbitrary. And in fact, I think the most fundamental unit of time that would make a good international unit is the frequency of an electron. Because electrons have a wavelength and a frequency, the Compton wavelength and the Compton frequency. Protons similarly have a common wavelength and frequency, but that's not the actual physical dimensions of the proton, which are related to the charge radius. So you can still describe protons and neutrons as having wavelengths and frequencies. So all matter in space, everywhere, has frequencies, and it has wavelengths. So dimensions and time are at the fundamental core of what our universe is made of. And all quantum fluctuations have wavelengths and frequencies. So time is at the very essence of everything. It's not something that emerged just because a human thought about it. Because all matter, every single bit of matter in the universe experiences time. So, what's the, what's the problem? Why, why do people have a problem figuring out where time is? And that's because of Einstein's lie that time emerges from space. Because space alone, the literary definition is it's a balanced container that contains all matter. Space alone is not physical. Einstein said he believed in special relativity that space did not have an ether and did not have a quantum field. So there was no place for time to come from. So he imagined that time or clocks just physically appear magically in space by some unknown mechanism. And then they can magically change by a moving observer or by objects like stars changing this 
the speed of time in space. But it was all a fictitious thought experiment. And most physicists just seem to skip over that part, that it's all fiction, it's not based on any physical reality. Space has no time, space has no clocks, space has no time dilation, which is a video I just did that's related to this one. So, all physicists start from a wrong starting point. In one physics video I said, time is causality. No, time is the inverse of frequency. Frequency is the most elementary form of time in the universe. That's where it emerges from. And to see where it emerges from, we have to go to the quantum field. The quantum field tells us. Quantum field is made of quantum fluctuations. Quantum fluctuations have wavelengths and frequencies. Those wavelengths and frequencies give the quantum field dimensions and time. But what's really fascinating is that dimensions and time emerge from the quantum field. There's no extra source. There's no magical dimensions and time coming from, from space, non-physical space. Dimensions and time originate in the quantum field itself. And the way that happens is, per the Casimir effect, we know that the quantum fluctuations are electric charge dipoles. They have positive and negative charges that are linked together. And we know that because Casimir effect is van der Waals forces, which happen between dipoles that interact with each other. And this dipole interaction causes space to, in a sense, jiggle a bit. And when it jiggles, it pushes on bodies of matter. And it causes them to move when there's differentials in pressure. So van der Waals forces are critical to understanding the Casimir effect, but also other forms of acceleration in space. But when you have van der Waals forces, you also have van der Waals torque because all the dipoles are interacting with all the other dipoles. So that when one electron moves, it causes the dipole to rotate. It polarizes and rotates. But when one dipole rotates, it causes other dipoles to rotate, and so on and so forth. And as all these dipoles are rotating, when they do rotate, they have to make other particles rotate. And this takes energy. The particles don't want to rotate because they have to make other particles rotate. And you end up with inertia. This is where inertia comes from. The resistance of the quantum dipoles to rotation. And key, and key point is to polarization and magnetization. And the speed of light emerges from it. But when we talk about the quantum fluctuations themselves, they start at a point, go up, the charges go out, and then they go back and annihilate. Well, when the charges go out, they are working against the torque of the quantum field, the van der Waals torque. So the local van der Waals torque experienced by each quantum dipole is what determines the wavelength. It determines how far the wavelength goes for a given amount of energy it has. And the energy comes from how much the rest of the quantum field is pushing against it to prevent its motion. And the wavelength comes from that as well. So the local conditions in the quantum field experienced by a quantum fluctuation determine what the wavelength and frequency are. And the energy. And the energy is in balance. The energy of quantum fluctuation is pushing against the energy of the local quantum field, determining what that quantum fluctuation energy is. And this leads to a distribution of quantum fluctuation energies that covers the entire spectrum of possible energies and wavelengths and frequencies. 
and in turn the wavelengths and frequencies of the quantum fluctuations give the quantum field dimensions and time. And that's where the physical dimensions and, the phys and time come from. They emerge from the quantum field. They're a property of the quantum field. And the quantum field is entirely self-regulating. It has nothing to do with non-physical space. And in fact, we have to go back and redo relativity that Einstein screwed up with his imaginary spatial dimensions and spatial clocks. The real clocks come from the quantum field, they're electromagnetic, and we need to develop and switch to an entirely electromagnetic form of relativity theory, both special and general relativity, in order to have a correct form of physics. And that's something I'm working on. So that's where time comes from. It's part of the quantum field. It's part of quantum field theory. And so that's where we need to start in the discussion of time. And we need to get rid of all the metaphysical nonsense that's out there in the public sphere and pop science media. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. And if you do, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about quantum field theory and my and particle theory, I have three books. I have The 100 Greatest Lies in Physics, The Zero Point Universe, my basic quantum field theory book, and my recent book, Goodbye Quarks, The Ending Theory. And if you buy one of my books, that helps support me. And as an independent researcher, I appreciate the support. I also have a Patreon account if you would go that route. So thanks for watching.